that for an admissions committee tells me that when you and if you struggle in medical school, you've been down this path already and you'll, you'll figure it out again. Welcome to Ask Dr. Gray Pre-Med q and I hope you're having an amazing day. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, that is awesome. I, I love these openings where I'm like a Dr. Seuss uh, with my rhyming, uh, opening it up. But what can I help you with today? So my main question was about going back and retaking classes to okay. improve my GPA. Okay. Mainly going back and like whether I should retake general chemistry or not. Did you get a C in it? Yes. <laughs> What does your overall GPA look like? I have an upward trend where it was it was pretty low for my first two years of college, and then it went up for my junior and senior year. But I think I've reached a point where I can't really move it that much more yeah. without possibly going back and retaking classes. Yeah. Do you have any upper division classes that you can take? I've taken upper level bio classes okay. and neuroscience classes, but not chemistry classes. Okay. What about genetics or anything like that? I have not taken genetics. Okay. Usually at the end of the day, the question isn't, you got to see, did you retake it? Can you prove that you can handle chemistry? At the end of the day, it's big picture. What does your trends look like? What does your GPA look like? Is there a consistent story of you having a C in general chemistry one and another C in general chemistry two, a C in organic chemistry, right? Which which potentially points to you not having a good foundation in the chemistry. Uh, I was going to say chemistry sciences uh, in chemistry in general. Um, that's really the the heart of the question. The one C at the end of the day doesn't really matter. Retaking one C doesn't really matter. If if you feel like at this point you've done well in the upper division at past chemistry, right? Maybe you haven't taken really high up upper division classes for your chemistry courses, but if you struggled in, in, let's say, chemistry one, but you did decent in chemistry two, did well in, in organic chemistry one and two, biochemistry, et cetera, then you are probably okay, and you don't need to take the general chemistry over again. That, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. There's no difference math-wise between you retaking your Gen Chem series or one or two, whatever it is, versus you just taking something else. At the end of the day, math-wise, it doesn't make any difference. And one C from earlier on doesn't matter. Okay, but if I have like multiple Cs from early on, then is it possible that I need to like retake it? it again, like C, it, it, big picture, what is what is your overall GPA look like? It's right now, I think a 3.5. Okay. Yeah. Overall, your GPA is fine. You have some C's, you've overcome, obviously have done very well. The the C's, it's it's not like schools go, oh, you got a C, you can't handle medical school. They go, okay, you got some C's, where have you gone from here? For some students, they retake the classes early on, and, and maybe that's not the right thing or the wrong thing. It doesn't really matter. It's that individual student retook the classes. Maybe they need to they needed to improve their foundational knowledge. At this point, with you close to to finishing wherever you're at in your schooling, going back and taking freshman level or sophomore level classes when you're about to graduate just doesn't make sense especially given that overall your GPA isn't bad and you have a really good trend. Okay. And so I would rather you you spend time on some upper division classes if you want to continue that upward trend, but retaking the Cs, the, the Cs aren't the problem. Medical schools aren't looking at the C going, oh, you're not going to be able to handle medical school. I want to see you retake that and do better. That's That's not the the kind of the concern around the C's. If obviously you have C's throughout, then there's a concern, are you academically qualified for medical school? 
early seeds, there are a million reasons for it, right? M maybe you just had some adjustment issues. Maybe you tried to take on too much. You just had, had some issues learning kind of the pace of college. Whatever those reasons are, you had those early seeds, you improved, you have an upward trend, you figured stuff out, and you're doing great now. The seeds aren't a concern. Okay, got it. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. How many C's are we talking about? Um, I have, I believe, four. Okay. All from freshman year, mix of freshman, sophomore year? Mix of freshman and sophomore. Okay. All kind of consistent in terms of chemistry? Um, chemistry and bio. Okay. So a mix of it spread out mm -hmm. throughout those first two years. It's, it's not going to be an issue. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Again, assuming you have this strong upward trend, assuming your upper division classes that you've taken since then are, are good grades, which would lend to you having an upward trend, it's, it's not an issue. And then uh, obviously kind of foundational knowledge-wise for the MCAT is that foundational mm -hmm. knowledge there. And again, assuming you're doing well in your upper division classes, the foundation is there. You just struggled earlier on. Right. Okay. Cause I was also considering like doing a master's program in order to like improve my no, GPA. No, no, not, okay. not with a three, five science GPA. What's your overall GPA, your cumulative GPA overall? It's a three, six. Okay. Yeah. You don't, you don't need a master's for a three, six and a three, five. Masters okay. are like a three one student, a three two student potentially, and even uh, I I typically don't recommend masters programs. I recommend post back programs where you're doing more undergraduate level coursework because that's what medical schools tend to tend to lean on is your undergraduate GPA. Okay, got it. But you don't you don't need any sort of improvement when you look at your last two years. What do you think GPA wise your la just your last two years would be? On my last two years. Um, would definitely be between like a th would be about like a three seven. My last two years have definitely been a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fine. Okay. Yeah. You you've you've proven academically with your upward trend that you are academically capable of medical school. That's what a master's program is for to prove that you can academically handle medical school. You've done that already. You struggled early and then you improved. Your overall GPA in your mind isn't great, but I'll tell you it's solid GPA. A 3.5 is a solid GPA. So many mm -hmm. students, because they're on Student Doctor Network, look at that and go, oh my God, it's horrible. I need a master's program. That's just not true. Take the MCAT, make sure the rest of your, your application is is well-rounded, you have good clinical experience, you're shadowing, you, you can put together a, a solid story on why you want to be a physician, mm -hmm. and you'll be fine. Okay, got it. I, I hear hesitation in your voice. <laughs> no, um, that definitely makes sense. I was just like, seeing, I just like saw my GPA kind of as like a hindering me kind of, I guess. No, it, it won't hinder you. Okay. It, 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 in my mind, it actually helps because you have a story of struggle and then triumph of, of you having some initial issues and then you figuring it out. Mm -hmm. That to me is a stronger student than someone just coming in, getting a three, seven across the board. Okay. Not improving, not going down, just kind of being steady. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I like, I like the story of, of someone who, who had some early issues for whatever reason and then figured it out and did better. That for an admissions committee tells me that when you and if you struggle in medical school, you've been down this path already and you'll, you'll figure it out again. I was at an admissions conference uh, in 2019 in Toronto, and I was speaking kind of on behalf of pre-med students, and it was all deans and directors of admissions uh, of medical schools and nursing schools and PT schools, et cetera. And the, the kind of overarching theme that I kept hearing from all of these admissions committee members was it's, it's not where you are at the end of the day. It's where you got with everything that, that kind of the, the cards that you were dealt. And mm -hmm. so 
someone who was given life on a silver platter with a 3.7 GPA versus someone who, like yourself, struggled early on and then figured it out, that is a much better story in terms of just who you are and what you've been through. Okay. So don't worry about your GPA. It's not going to be an issue. You uh, obviously need a strong MCAT score, just mm -hmm. like everyone else, as, as high yeah. as you can get. Uh, and the, the rest of your application needs to be solid. But in, in terms of GPA, I, I wouldn't be concerned about it holding you back enough for you to go and spend twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a master's program, which I, I typically don't recommend a master's program anyway. Okay, got it. Well, thank help? you so much. Yeah. Any other questions? No, that was it. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you.